This Simple History episode is brought to you by World of Warships. Salvo, military tactic, 15th to the 20th century. A salvo is a military term that stands for the simultaneous firing of several guns, as opposed to gunfire where all guns fire independently once an order is given. A volley is a term similar to salvo, but the two are distinguishable, as volley fire is a term related to small arms and infantry. The salvo tactic was used by naval and field artillery with the goal of achieving the maximum amount of firepower as possible in one moment. Depending on the situation in combat, a salvo could be used in numerous variations and against different targets. In naval warfare, the salvo has been used since the 15th century and the age of sail. Ever since the first guns were mounted on ships, salvos were used. From that time until now, the goal was the same, to cripple the enemy with one blow and prevent them from fighting back. It was, however, the development of battleships in the 19th and 20th century that led to further development of the salvo tactic. In that period, modern battleships became the symbol of naval power. They had multiple turrets with multiple guns mounted. Turrets allowed all guns on the deck to concentrate fire in various directions. With the development of battleships, their guns became larger and more powerful. Simultaneous and coordinated fire from eight or more heavy caliber guns made this salvo a tactic of great firepower. A battleship's standard tactic was to bring the enemy ship in the range of its guns. However, the problem was that once the enemy ship was in range, it too had the capability to fire. Therefore, it was necessary to deal the enemy a mighty, decisive blow as soon as possible. To do that, a commanding officer had to coordinate the gun crew to concentrate the ship's firepower. This was not the only advantage of the salvo, as it also proved to be a superior way to set the firing range since salvos were easier to spot than individual shots. Individual splashes were quite difficult to distinguish, contrary to salvos where their shells fell together and their splashes could be seen together. Finally, a salvo had a far smaller spread than individual fire. There were a number of salvo variations. The broadside. Once the range was determined, the commanding officer could decide to order simultaneous fire from all guns that could aim at the abeam target. Half salvo or split salvo was when the ship fired one gun from each turret at the same time. Double salvo when one split salvo was followed by another. This tactic allowed the gun to reload maintaining somewhat continuous fire of salvos. A bracket salvo or zigzag salvo was a method used to determine the range to the target. The Germans used the tactic extensively in both world wars. It consisted of three double salvos. The first fired at the range determined by the rangefinder, the second 400 meters long, and the third 400 meters short of the first salvo. By noticing which salvo was the closest, an accurate range was determined. The latter salvo was a similar tactic. In order to determine the target range, the commanding officer would arrange each group of guns to fire a bit further than the previous until he reached the target. Apart from targeting enemy ships, salvos were quite effective against coastal fortifications. Very often, naval artillery efficiency was compared to air attacks, which were considered to be a better solution in fighting enemy strongholds. However, barely any plane except for heavy bombers could provide such intense firepower as a battleship salvo. For example, a 16-inch shell from the Iowa-class battleship weighed around 2,000 pounds. The Iowa battleship had three turrets with three guns each, which meant that its salvo provided 18,000 pounds of explosive. When concentrated, it could shake the ground on the spot where it hit. Similar to Navy artillery, field artillery guns operated in units with coordinated fire. One way of fighting the enemy was by applying the salvo tactic. It involved the simultaneous fire of entire ranks of the battalion, providing the firepower similar to those for battleships. However, unlike naval warfare, the field artillery salvo had offensive and defensive roles. Offensive. The destroy salvo was a short but quick salvo fire. The goal was to drop several shells in a short amount of time in order to inflict maximum casualties before the enemy reorganized and reached for cover. 
The counter-battery salvo was a short, fast, simultaneous fire against an enemy artillery position with the goal of destroying as much of their firing capabilities as possible. And lastly, the suppression salvo had a slow rate of fire of usually one round per gun per minute. It was a type of support fire with the goal to either pin the enemy down or to force him to withdraw during the attack of friendly troops. Offensive salvos were most often combined with predicted aiming, but as artillery progressed, so did the aiming techniques. This allowed artillery units to precisely determine enemy positions before firing. In such a case, an artillery unit was able to get the most out of their salvo, as the first rounds would make a direct hit with maximum casualties. Defensive The suppression salvo was similar to the offensive type, but with the aim in slowing the enemy's advancement or to make a screen between the attacker and defender. The destroy salvo in the defensive strategy was a more intense shelling that caused casualties and disorganization among the attackers. And lastly, the final protective fire was a type of salvo, striking close to a friendly unit's position in order to protect it from an overwhelming attack. As a tactic, the salvo has been used by field artillery units for centuries. As in naval warfare, the intention was to deal a massive blow to the enemy in an instant. The tactic was widely used during 19th century warfare and became very effective with the introduction of rifled barrels and high explosive shells. This allowed artillery units to shell the enemy with enormous amounts of firepower. In the post-World War II era, the salvo tactic began to decline. Development of cruise missiles made battleships and their artillery obsolete. A missile launched from a destroyer was able to cause more damage at greater distances than any battleship. The domination of long-range missiles and air bombing also diminished the role of field artillery in the same manner. Today, salvos are mostly used for ceremonial purposes as a loud and thunderous performance of might. Now you know the military tactic of the salvo, you might use it in World of Warships. The game is free to play and referred to as the thinking man's action game because it has the perfect balance of action and strategy you can command a massive naval fleet featuring some of history's most iconic war vessels. In this game, you can unlock new ships and dominate the oceans with 30 million players worldwide. Experience combat in weather effects that make each engagement unique and change the tactics of the battle. In World of Warships, each in-game ship is faithfully recreated using 3D scans of the real-life version. World of Warships is constantly updating the game so there's something new to experience with the steady cadence of new missions, game updates, and events. There's over 200 ships available to play across 11 different nations. Use our exclusive code below and get a free USS Langley aircraft carrier, which allows for a completely different form of fast-paced World of Warships gameplay. Click the link below to play World of Warships and collect an exclusive bonus starter pack. New players can register with the code PLAYLANGLEY2019 to receive 300 doubloons, 1 million credits, the USS Langley aircraft carrier, 3 days of premium time, and more.